Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having fun doing some math problems. Now, I really enjoyed doing the last interview question, so I thought I'd do another one. Uh, this one's quite interesting. It's to do with trailing zeros and factorials. So, the question asks, how many trailing zeros does 365 factorial have? Where they say trailing zeros are zeros right at the end. Now be warned, I have seen a problem like this before, so I'll have a little bit of a head start on you. But if you want, pause the video, have a go at it, see what you get, see how you'd fare in an interview. Otherwise, let's, let's get started. So, here, I again want to be thinking in a way that is good in an interview. So I'm going to start off by just testing some bits. So let's test some small numbers rather than testing 365 factorial. But let's go 2 factorial would be something easy too. What about 5 factorial? 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, that's equal to 20 times by 6, which is equal to 120, so one trailing zero. Okay, so that was interesting. What about we go a step further? If I did 6 factorial, would that make a difference? Well, I'd be timesing it by 6, so that would be 720. So, nope, still one trailing zero. Now, where are the trailing zeros coming from? So, let's think about it a little bit. How do I get a zero at the end? Well, that's got to be a factor of 10, right? Because anything with a trailing zero at the end, I could write as, so let's say I had something awful like seven, three, five, zero, zero, zero. I could write that as 735 times 10 to the power three. So there must be some factors of 10 to the, of 10 in there. So I should be able to take out factors of 10. If I go back to my example of five factorial, well, here I can see that the 5 and the 2 make a 10. So that's where my 10 is coming from. So instead, I could rewrite this as 10 times by 12. And then I can see that I've got that factor of 10. So it seems that the factors of 10, the trailing zeros, come from the 5 times a 2, because that's the only way to make a 10. The prime factors are 5 and a 2. So... I need five and twos to combine to make my trailing zeros. Five times two gets me my 10. Okay, so how can I make that? Well, in any factorial, I'm gonna have a lot of twos. Every other number is gonna have a factor of two, if not more, like four has two, two of them. Whereas fives are much less common. So for every, because for every five, I need a two. There's gonna be plenty of twos spare, not enough fives. Okay. So how many fives are in 365? Well, if I do that division, 365 divided by five, well, that is, what, that's 60 plus uh, 12, 13, uh, 60, 73. So 73 of them in there. So that's at least 73 zeros. Could I have any more? Well, let's again think about a lower number. I don't know, uh, 25 factorial. Well, I'm going to have fives coming from uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, but then 25 is going to give me two fives, because it's five squared. So I'm going to have more than that. Okay, so how many, how many 25s go into 365? So in fact, I want to do 365 divided by 25. I want to actually floor the function, meaning that I just, if it's point something, if it was point 0.5, I just round it down. So that would be, what, 4, 8, 12, 14. So there's 14 of them. Okay. So that's 5 done. I've got 73 fives. I've got an extra 5 from 14. So I've got 25 in there 14 times. But there's another one, 125. So 125 because that's five cubed, would give, every 125 would give me three fives. So that gives me, what does that give me? There is one, two, there's only two of them. Okay, and then timesing it by five again would be 500 and something, so way too large. So if I was to expand it all out and work out how many fives I have, I have 73 that is just from the fives. I have another 14 that comes from the 25s. And then I have another two that comes from the 125s. So in total, I have 89 fives. 
Okay, so I've got 89 fives. I'm definitely going to have enough twos because you, you've got loads. Two, four, six, eight, you've got hundreds of them. Um, yeah, so five times two would give me the 10. There's no other way to get a 10. Um, only through a five times a two. That's how many fives I've got. So there must be 89 trailing zeros. So I'm going to say 89 trailing zeros. And now I'd like to check this by plugging into a calculator. Um, but generally the calculators wouldn't do 365 factorial, way too big a number. But uh, if you do some scientific calculators online, you can actually show that there is 89 trailing zeros, which is an insane number of trailing zeros. So this one's really interesting. It's about looking at the factors and realizing that 365 is just them all multiplied together. I can manipulate them how I want, work out how many fives I've got, how many 25s I've got, how many 125s I've got. Really interesting problem. Um, quite a difficult problem to be fair for an interview question. But again, interviewers will talk you through it a bit more. They'll give you some hints. They'll get you to try some of these smaller numbers. It might have been worth if I was still stuck trying 10 factorial. And hopefully I should have realized that there was two trailing zeros. And then that might give me a bit more of a hint. But yeah, if you like this question, please hit that like button. Let's me know you want some more of these. Um, but yeah, if not, I will see you in the next video. Bye.